Kingdom of Bahrain provides the playground for the final round of Season 10 of the FIA World Endurance Championship, the eight hours of Bahrain, our sixth and final race. 241 days since we started in Sebring. Season 10, the longest season in the single calendar year, finally comes to its conclusion this Saturday afternoon here in Bahrain. Cars lining the grid in the sunshine, and it will be a long, hot day until the night comes before the end of this race. FIA President Mohammed bin Sulayem on the grid with the president of the ACO. FIA President Mohammed bin Sulayem, 14-time Middle East Rally Champion, flags the field away here in Bahrain. The sixth, the final race of season 10 of the FIA World Endurance Championship. The eight hours of Bahrain, sixth and final race, season 10 of the FIA World Endurance Championship is about to get underway. We have 37 cars on the grid in five classes. All the titles except the hypercar manufacturers are up for grabs. The lights go out now, uh, finally we go green. You cannot pass before the start finish line, but it is five, six wide behind the leaders. Toyota Peugeot, Toyota Peugeot. Sebastian Webby controls the first turn and Paul De Resta has a big spin up behind him. And uh, the Alpine, Gustavo Menezes, jumps the first of the Peugeots, I beg your pardon, it was the Alpine of Nico Lapierre, his former teammate Gustavo Menezes, who he got by. And in LMP2, United going the wrong, the long way around the outside, a real team by WRT onto the dirt. Can he get through that second Peugeot? Very slow here. Alpine, I uh, beg your pardon, uh, United now with the lead that was in a LMP2. Pass off circuit though, so uh, I'm sure the stewards will notice that. And we also had side by side both of the Ferraris. The Alpine goes past that uh, Toyota, uh, but uh, the 92 Porsche alongside both the Ferraris, that is still tussling through uh, as we get through two thirds of this circuit. And, and the reason the Alpine is getting past the hypercars here, particularly Toyota, is they can't deploy the hybrid at, in the slow speed corners, whereas the Alpine can deploy all its power. And so Toyota is a little bit down on power in the slower stuff. Spin up. Excessive heat as Lopez now does indeed yeah. get Lapierre into turn one. The Toyota super quick on the straights. But Lapierre is going to try and cross the line here. Now he's going to be on the attack towards turn four, but I'm not sure it's going to have that straight line speed advantage. But he's in the slipstream, he's hunting, yeah. and it's not enough. Right, let's get into the depths of our GT Pro battle here from James Collado. Leave the tyres as much as possible. It will pay off in a few laps. And we're going to hear exactly the same from the Porsches. We know we will because we hear it in every race. You're doing a great job, Kevin. Saving fuel, saving tires. And that looks like a move oh. down the inside. He's going to be ruthless, of yeah. course, because 91 has got to give it everything. So that's the kind of moves we're expecting. Oh, this is something. How long are we into the race? Well, Jimmy Bruni <laughs> there. 13 and a half minutes. <laughs> Jimmy Bruni on Antonio Fuoco. Now, we talked before you were back in the booth when you were still on the grid that we are focused on 51 and 92. They are the key, they're the front runners in this championship. Because Jimmy Bruni got pole, he's now only two points behind the 92 Porsche, so that means three cars are definitely in it. However, the, may, the way the maths works out, Antonio Fuoco there in the 52 Sorry, car, it's Fuoco, of course. Yeah, not, they not, not, can not. also win the championship if the other three cars don't finish and they win it, because they will, because the only other car will be Corvette, they'll be champions. So all four of these cars can be champion. Yeah, you hear the contact there. Jimmy Bruni comes calling. Antonio Fuoco fights it as long as he can. And got on the inside. Oh, yeah. down the inside of Jimmy Bruni. And through he goes for second place. Back to where he was. Now then. He's going to be under attack, though. A, a, a repass potentially coming from Bruni into turn one. But I think he's just about got enough distance. I think the Porsche is a little bit faster in the straight line. And can't overtake off the track. Estra goes right to first, the edge. First to fourth is He's now three try and go the seconds. 
He's going around the outside. Oh. He's got to keep it on track if he goes for it. They Estra's making it tough for him. Yeah, he back he's had to back out of that Great one. stuff, this. But this is why it's called Pro. Because of driving like that, because they know they can't afford damage, but they can't afford to let the car go either. He's going to lunge down the he's inside going, of turn oh. eight. He's going to get it done, there. but Estra's gone so wide, he's going to cross over the line on the exit and be yeah. back there and challenge him down towards turn nine. He's it's going over to be the close, brow. The Ferrari Ferrari has just the got inside it. line down the hill to the hair. In. He's got it. Great stuff. Great oh. switchback down the hill from got Floco. It. Up, up the inside again. That no. was that was a good move there by Astra. Didn't quite make it stick. He saw Floco going a little bit too deep, but that Ferrari is starting to come on strong now. A lot of farting and they will have the undercut with the metal tires. Will be cool. That could be. He's going to go for the undercut. He's, his engineers know what the number seven car is going to do. So are they going to do a half change? No, no tyre change. There's no tyres ready to go. So left side's only for the seven, or is it an all four stop? Let's see how they ballet round at the left only. Well. Now, that's the undercut that Buemi is worried about, that Lopez will come out with fresher tyres on the hard worked side of the car. Certainly, let's see where he comes out on traffic, though. So look, here we go, Fuoco, who had the speed before, found his way past 92, is doing it again into Turn 1. So he, I mean, he's worked his way back through the field after the pit stops, and uh, we'll ask his team, no doubt, where's the next, why am I in second place? Where's the next car? Ah. 94, it's 93. It's Diresa. Down at turn okay. one. Oh, now he was complaining he's, about gears, wasn't he? Gear selection. Okay, or has oh, he just no. pulled it's stopping. straight off? It is stopping. It's stopping. Drinking car out of the way. You know, oh, it's just yeah. stopping. Yeah. It's switched itself off, hasn't it? Is it a hybrid issue? Perhaps it, it just looked like it wasn't slowing down. Maybe it's just gears. He couldn't finally couldn't get down the gears and. Yeah. I should stop it. Here we go. Let's listen to this. It was hard to tell when we first came aboard, but you could just hear it's quite clunky on the downshift. Yeah. Yeah. Stop at a safe place and do another power cycle. Stop at a safe place and go P1 5 seconds, then P0, and then go again. Stay in the middle of the track now, take your time to do each step. Well, I, I, again, it sounds very similar to what Sebastian Bremi was being asked to do when his car stopped at Spa. Yeah. The 92 and 52 as he goes to the inside. Is he going to try and follow the Toyota through? He is. Molina tries to muscle in out of the way, but it's so close. Oh, he's off. Once again, oh, is he going to have to give that position back or is he going to lose it anyway? I think there might have been contact. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Once he, again, this fight. Can't afford to on. have a puncture. Has to let the uh, into Europol car. And is that the race leader? No, it's car seven. Seven car. Yes, yeah. in the middle of both of the, I mean, it's... Yeah. With Rene Rast on Phil Hansen, he went one way, sold him a dummy beautifully Oof. and gets the job done into turn one. It looks to me like he's just got more grip. It might be, Martin, like you said before, a case of fresher tyres or he's just got the speed at this stage in the race. Yeah. Or there's a pool of oil on the floor or there's some bits of swarf in the sump. But electronics tend to be invisible. Here's the Corvette. Passing the 92. Back up past the 92. That was wow. That was the dummy going into turn eight. He went for the outside. Porsche had the inside cover, but left enough space. Don't worry, he has three tyres. Oh, okay. Hello. Okay, so that, from that we know that Christensen is double stinting his tyres. They go, yeah, that's why he got by you. You're not slow. Lloyd Duval back in the garage now. This again has a little bit of the look of Monza about it. Jota it and United. Him. It's Phil Hansen and Antonio Felix da Costa. Could be. And you've also got the <laughs> number eight uh, Toyota in the mix there behind. Looking to make his way behind. Yeah, he's uh, on the fresher tyres there. Is uh, Phil Hansen finds his way past Felix da Costa. This is critical for the LMP2 Pro-Am. Where is the AF Corsa car? Right, what's happened here then? Oh, has it happened with the car 31? Oh, that's a WRT car for oh, Rast. Rast. Yeah, and James Allen just caught, got caught up in it. No contact for the Argar Pro car. 
Louise. Oh, and really look, Robin Fryan's looking on. Yeah. He knows, he knows. That expression says it all. I fear for them. Lorenzo Colombo was coming fresh out of the pits, fresh into that car, by the way, the Prema car. Uh, Will Owen, what it doesn't have is reliability oh, yet. That's a good sign, is it? So no, the last time no, no, Paul no. was in the car, it broke, and yeah. uh, he gets back into the car, only to be told, still, sorry, still it's still broken, yeah, you've got to get back out. I think that's done. Remember the year with the wide mouth frog Audi that they they've weren't changed. allowed they've to... While we've been, while we've been yeah. nattering, the two the leaders have swapped positions, you two can, Ferraris. You can clearly see, because yeah. one's got red mirrors. <laughs> that one's got a lovely yellow stripe at the front of it. Yeah. Just before corner one, you let him by. Okay. Look, and, and no question, no, oh no, why no, 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 and I'm sure before the bits that we were played, I'm sure there was none of that. Very fierce contender for drive of the day in LMP2 the so far, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think Robin Fryans was great as well. He had such speed and uh, zero in the state. Yeah, he, he's like Antonio, he's he is just, yeah, he is so good so often. Okay, um, I... Oh, this does not look good. Is it in the 51 garage? Our reigning champions, James Collado, Alessandro Puig, Pierre Guidi. They are doing enough at the moment. Gearbox oil, gearbox oil, 131, 131, warning, let me know. Gearbox oil hasn't risen, so maybe there is no oil. Oh, the car that leads oh, is the 52 Ferrari, so Collado gets a free place anyway. The main problem it seems to be he's struggling to slow the car down. He's getting off the racing yeah. line, he's getting off the Everywhere. track. There goes the yeah. Corvette by. Yeah. He's trying to get, uh, what he's trying to do is keep it in the same gear. Yeah. yeah. He's stuck in gear, isn't he? He yeah. dare go down below fifth. So he's lost second place down to Nick Tandy. The gap now to Jimmy Bruni is so 15 listen, 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 seconds. Listen. 64 leads the race. 64 leads the race. Uh, <laughs> it, so to complete the point, 51 has to okay. finish the race oh. and 91 has to be second. Right. Yeah, Marco, you're doing a good job, so we need to keep driving like we are racing. We are still in the race. So manage the tyres accordingly, but we are still in the race. Because here's the thing, what we don't yet know is he's now 37 seconds back from the 51. So that is the fast coming up here. 50, Into turn eight. 52 nice. on the 91. That is the pass for position. Yeah, gets it done. Thought that uh, 91 was going to turn in there for one moment, but uh, and that's that was a good the, move. That's the critical position. Yep. The so second would win the 91 the championship, third won't. Ooh. If the 51 keeps going. Which is fine. Absolutely. Which is fine. 37 and a half minutes remain. 46, take the lead. Out that for Mikkel Pedersen. There was a driver change there as well, wasn't there, in that Porsche? And there is the driver change at Iron Dames. He, he's been to Le Mans, you've been to Le Mans, I've been to Le Mans, we've all been to Le Mans. We all know, we all know. Look, he's, he's absolutely uncontrollably emotional. Last lap of the season, last few hundred metres of the season. It is Toyota number seven that wins it. It is another Toyota Gazoo Racing 1-2 here in Bahrain. Mike Conway, Kamui Kobayashi and Jose Maria Lopez are the winners. Our hypercar champions are the crew of car number eight. Brendan Hartley, Rio Hirakawa and Sebastian Buemi. Yeah, thank you very much. I think definitely I think Tim did a great job. We met one two in the end and obviously Kaid win the championship and of course we won the team title as well. So thanks for the all support and uh, from Japan as well. It's great award. And of course our <coughs> partner, all the sponsor helped us the through season. And of course I think all dr driver did a great job. Thank you very much. And the Alpine crew join the two Toyota driver lineups on the overall hypercar podium. Last year, the drama in GTE Pro was all on the last lap. This year, it was 90 minutes of breathtaking tension for our champions, Alessandro Pierre Guidi and James Collado. When I jumped in, and then I, I heard a funny noise in fourth gear, I was like, shit, sorry. Uh, I was like, this is really bad. 
and then it, it seized and then uh, yeah we didn't have any gears we were stuck in fifth I thought it was over that's why you saw the emotion um, but we, we never give up and we're three times world champion what could have been heartbreak ends in jubilation victory for the 52 team Corvette takes second and the 92 Porsche in third place they're the runners up in the championship but for the third year the champions are James Collado and Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Victory in LMP2 to WRT. They won at home in Spa, they won last time out in Fuji, and their third win of the season here in Bahrain. The champions in LMP2 are the 38 team from Jota. And the champion in GTM, Ben Keating, with the man who shared the car with them all season long, Marco Sorensen. The TF Sport team come out on top for Aston Martin. After eight hours of frantic racing, it's a Toyota 1-2 in hypercar from Alpine. LMP2 victory went to WRT. AF Corsa's 52 car, the winners in GTE Pro. And Project 1, 1-2 ahead of the Iron Dames in GTE Am. And that brings season 10 of the FIA World Endurance Championship to a glorious close. Hypercar will continue to thrill and excite as we look forward to season 11 and the arrival of two heavy hitters in the top class with Ferrari, Porsche leading the charge and Cadillac coming too. A golden age is underway.